The winery got its name from a town called Castle Finn, which uh, is about a mile and a half south of the uh, winery. It started uh, probably about 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, my wife and I at the time decided we were going to try to, you know, drink a little bit of wine. We had uh, another couple that and we thought, you know, there's got to be some better wine than this. So we kind of got interested in making wine. So we, we got together and we read, you know, on how to make wine and all that stuff. So we went out and bought a bunch of supplies. And the first batch of wine we did was elderberry wine. And, and you know, surprisingly enough, when we were done with it, that come out, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty good wine. And that was, it was mainly dumb luck. I mean, you know, it was just beginner's luck. And, and then from there on out, we, we had other types of wine. We, we'd uh, done a lot of fruit wines. And then we started getting into some grape wines. And so one thing led to another. Then about um, um, six or so years ago, my son was a junior or senior in high school. And he was gonna go to Murray State down in Murray, Kentucky and, and study horticulture. So he said, Dad, let's, let's plant some grapes. And he said, you know, you guys have been talking about maybe a winery down the road. Well, if we don't ever uh, start a winery, we can, uh, you know, sell the grapes. Like I said, I did research on the, uh, the wine business. And, uh, you know, in this part of the country, in Clark and Edgar County, there wasn't any wineries. And it's, a, you know, it, it was one of the fastest growing segments of the economy. Is, is wine, wine wineries or wine production or, or, you know, deal like that. So we decided that, you know, we would, we would venture out and build a winery. And, you know, it's one of those stories, you know, if you build it, we hope they come. And uh, so presently we're a 1,200 acre cash grain operation with a few cows. And my son still works a full-time job and uh, I split my time between the farm and the winery. And my daughter works here at the winery full time. Yeah, they were the driving force that pushed me to, to go ahead with my plans. I mean, we'd talked about it for two or three years and you know, they were finally the, the factor that said, Dad, you know, you guys need to do this. I said, no, like I said, my son's got a horticulture degree, so he's in charge of landscaping and and, and uh, the outside work, and my daughter, you know, she's got a business degree from Indiana State University, and so she, she's doing the day-to-day -day operations. I mean, she's doing the accounting, she's doing the uh, secretarial work, so, you know, when you own your own business or small business, you, you know, you're a jack of all trades. Over the course of years, you know, I, I talked to different wineries, and I talked to guys, what sold, what didn't. And then I asked him, I said, you know, even if we don't go in the wine business, what grapes are marketable out there to sell? And so, so I decided on one, we got about six different varieties of grapes. Well, originally I bought this farm back in 1988 from Farm Credit. I went to Farm Credit and uh, talked to him at the time. And, and so we ended up buying this farm back in 1988. And so, you know, over the years, I, you know, I paid the farm down, I got the farm paid for, and I thought, well, you know, you know, I'd, I'd heard that farm credit uh, was, you know, anything to do with agriculture or ag business whatsoever, they would be interested in, in, you know, talking to you or loaning you money. So I went back and talked to Sue up in Paris, and, you know, she, she took all my information down and stuff, and, uh, you know, it was, Actually, a pretty painless process, really. I mean, it wasn't uh, it wasn't like going to the bank a hundred times with this paperwork and that paperwork. Sue called me with what she needed, uh, so you know they already had all the legal descriptions and they had appraisals and stuff of the farm because they already had the note on it to begin with. So they updated the procedure and you know the appraisals and stuff like that, and then so we were off and running. When people come out here, they like the setting because you can't hear the traffic from I-70, you can't hear Route 1 traffic. The only thing that you hear is nature sounds. You know, we've got birds out there on the pond and, and stuff like that, the wind blowing, whistling through the, through the woods. And, and people like the, the scenery plus the uh, kind of laid-back atmosphere of wineries. 
And they just like to come out and relax and have a glass of wine, you know, have, have some fun.